हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स टुडे आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग द क्वेश्चन वन बी ऑफ द यूपीएससी मेंस एंथ्रोपोलॉजी 2023 इट वाज अबाउट द कल्चरल इंपैक्ट ऑफ आयरन एज एज यू नो दैट आयरन एज डिमार्केट्स मेनी इंपॉर्टेंट बिगनिंग्स इन द ह्यूमन सिविलाइजेशन वी नो दैट विद द emergence of the iron age definitely the technology advanced in the human civilization because different tools for the agriculture came into existence hence the intensification of the agriculture took place not only the intensification of agriculture took place but also the stratification of the human society on the basis of the financial belongings also took place in iron age there was the emergence of uh, religions such as jainism as well as buddhism nearly about 4th century bc definitely the later part of the iron age is uh, connected with the later vedic period and it also marks the beginning of the harappan uh, that is indus valley civilization now there are two main characteristics of iron age that is painted grey ware and northern black polished ware now we have to take in into consideration that there are many scholars like t n roy georgi there are many who have demarcated the iron age time period as their own now uh, it is north india and southern part of india the iron age is definitely uh, <coughs> nearly about same period but in southern part of india there are many type of uh, artifacts which have been discovered and that dates from 1000 bc to 1000 ad but in northern part of india it was it demarcated from 1000 bc to 600 ad even in the iron age the uh, it was uh, ghagar ghagar and hakra valley in northern part of india in southern part of india the evidences were more confined to the vindhyas uh, there is halur is there and there is paikara is there site is there very important site in southern india now in southern india the megalithic burials were also present during the iron age and it also tells that the burials were from very great distance from the place of residence because in chalcolithic period which was just preceding this uh, iron age the burials were definitely found in the home or near the home or even be, uh, just below the floor of the home so what does this indicate this indicate that there was more socialization happening in the iron age that northern black painted wear is definitely found across the length and breadth of the country it was indicating that there must be some type of travel and some type of trade happening so that it was present across the length and breadth of the country now i will give the brief introduction to the iron age now this is the question paper we will discussing culture impact of iron age now t n roy as per the t n roy iron age can be divided into two phases an early that is from 800 to uh, 300 bc and late phase that is 400 to 100 bc georgi adosi divides the iron age into two phases the early phase from 1000 to 600 bc and the second between 550 and 100 bc in peninsular india the iron age roughly covers the period from 600 bc to 100 ad though evidence may be available for a larger time bracket covering 1000 bc to 1000 ad i have already told you thus archaeologically we are dealing with a period from 1000 bc to 100 ad 
this is also a period for which textual evidence is available the iron age in north india is archaeologically represented by assemblages that mainly contain particular pottery types such as painted grey ware and northern black polished ware <coughs> In Peninsular India, it is essentially megaliths, sometimes associated with habitation sites that comprise the Iron Age in the region. Painted grey ware, generally associated with Vedic people, have been found in conjunction with some late Harappan pottery. It has less intricate designs as compared to the early and mature period, suggesting a dilution of the rich culture. <coughs> The Vedic era saw the emergence of painted grayware culture. The Rig Vedic sites have painted grayware but iron objects and seals are absent. Hence it is considered a pre-iron phase of painted grayware. On the other hand, later Vedic sites are considered iron phase of painted grayware. This pottery is an ironish pottery found in Gangetic Plain and Ghagar Hakra Valley lasted from roughly 1100 BC to 600 BC. Mathura was the largest painted grayware site. Now this is what is about painted grayware. Now you can see some type of geometric pattern over this and the core structure is over present at the outer surface. Characterized by a style of fine grey pottery painted with the geometric patterns in black are confined to few geographical locations namely Punjab, Haryana and Upper Ganga Valley. This culture is associated with village and town settlements but without large cities. Toward the very end of later Vedic age around 6th century BC we see the emergence of second phase of urbanization. First being Indus Valley Civilization, this era marked the beginning of Northern Black Polished Ware. Now this is what Northern Black Polished Ware looks like. You can see the shiny surface, <coughs> glossy shiny type of pottery, made of fine fabric and served as tableware for richer class. Considered deluxe pottery only found with the elites revealing social stratification which was a result of Brahminical hegemony. Found in Ahichatra, Hastinapur, both in Uttar Pradesh, Nav Datoli, Madhya Pradesh. This culture is placed between 3rd century BC to 1st century AD. Megaliths refer to monuments constructed of big mega stones which are also known as liths. This culture is particularly known for its large stone graves. In the South India, this age is characterized by the use of iron. It was well baked and durable. Bulk of these are plain, however, a shred from Kaldiva reveals black painting on the surface. It has been excavated throughout India but majorly from the south, mostly in Vindhyas. They were used as grave goods revealing belief in life after death. Now this is a very peculiar thing that people in the time of the Iron Age they were believing that there is one more journey after death that a person has to do. So offerings to the burials started. Those who were in a good financial capacity they were offering gold ornaments, they were offering jewelries, they were offering many many things which are costly and it was a social status also. Now this is what life after death. On the basis of radiocarbon dates and stratigraphic record, megaliths can largely be dated between 600 BC and 100 BC. Though individual sites may give every early or late dates. For example, Halur with a date of 1000 BC and Paikara with date of 1000 AD. Thus, 
there is a wide diversity of megalith beetle types certain types are confined to particular region while in other areas one may find more than a single type the region of vidarbha that has a majority of megalith sites in maharashtra has only one type the stone circle with the cairn filling no cysts are found perhaps because slabs cannot be cut from local rock formation is the deccan trap that reminds us that some megalithic types may be localized because of certain ecological factors now this is what megalithic burial sites look like thus chamber tombs and the cysts are common in andhra and karnataka where there is plenty of quartzitic sandstone whereas rock cut caves tend to be found in kerala where the laterite allows for easy excavation from the above description of the various types of megaliths it is clear that not only is there a regional diversity the mode of disposal may differ within same cemetery as we have seen these burials do not always occur in context with large stones hence the use of term megalith is not entirely appropriate for this reason ls lashnik proposed the term pandukal complex pandu in tamil means old man and kal means stones thus implying the traditional name given to burials the evidence of the megalithic burials indicate a change from the preceding chalcolithic burial practices where the dead were disposed of within the settlement area and more specifically under the house floors now there are separate cemeteries i have already talked about this this shift is obviously intriguing as are the diverse modes of disposal within the same cemetery these may be all related to social practices in the same context could the fact that megalithic burials are largely collective have something to do with extended families or descent groups these two levels of social structures are inherent components of the tribal societies this suggestion may be plausible as it is unlikely for unrelated individuals to be interred together thus indications of reuse may be the provision of potholes and linking passages along with the surface markings to the point out location of burials largely burial contain pottery vessels and iron implements and weapons suggesting interment of personal possessions and perhaps a belief in life after death some burials seem to contain more distinctive objects that could be made from materials such as gold copper or bronze semi precious stones shell and so forth it is a form that many of the objects take that makes them distinctive bronze lids with sculpted figures of birds and animals as carnelian beads and other such objects similarly the kalghat khapa in vidarb one burial alone revealed horse bones horse bits and horse ornaments this was also the largest burial circle at maurjhari four out of 12 burials revealed horse remains the burial of horses and horse furniture may thus indicate that the animal may have been a status marker i have already told about the stratification of society on the basis of the financial wellness the excavations at the brahmagiri in karnataka have given some evidence of a diversity of the grave goods thus burials could range from those with no iron objects and only a few pots to those with numerous iron objects and pottery a single burial at brahmagiri clearly the richest had 33 gold two stone beads four copper bangles and one conch shell differential finds of special artifacts may suggest that they were status goods this is another megalithic burial site the full advantages of iron do not appear to have been recognized immediately primarily because social conditions did not favor more specialized use of metal 
early use of iron appears to have been limited to basic subsistence purposes for hunting and agriculture tools and for implements of defense it is only in urban situations that iron in more specialized forms would begin to be used for varied crafts the implications of iron metallurgy in the development of urbanism and state structures have been debated on it is rs sharma's contention that the introduction of iron enabled large scale clearance of forests and the use of iron plowshare that would have impacted on the extension and intensification of agriculture this in turn would have created greater surplus ushering in the state structures materially the iron age manifests in various ways in different parts of the subcontinent thus in the north one finds occupation with painted grey ware and northern black polished ware pottery while in peninsular india we find weavers associated with the black and red ware a common element is the presence of iron used now for major tools for production and for weapons increasing socio economic stratification is suggested by literally text eventually crystallizing in the varna system correspondingly this period in north india is associated with urbanization that in turn would have impacted on social structure and thank you and my all effort is to bring anthropology optional in a very simplified manner to the aspirants i will be dedicated to the success of the upsc aspirants anybody who wants a guidance who wants to write the test series test series will be free of cost for this upcoming mains so you can contact me on my given contact number i'll be always there to help you thank you very much